Good morning. We're just going to give a moment to clear the waiting room and make sure folks have connected to audio and that they can hear us. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. As a reminder to all who are with us this morning, please do remain on mute unless or until uh, you are appearing or testifying before the board. Good morning, this is a hearing before the licensing board for the city of Boston. Today is Tuesday, March 26th, 2024. Today's hearing is being held pursuant to temporary amendments to the open meeting law. That is what allows us to meet virtually. Today's hearing is being recorded and will be posted to the city of Boston's website. Before I review procedural matters, I will introduce chairwoman of the board, Kathleen Joyce. Good morning. Thank you, Danny. My name is Kathleen Joyce. I'm chair of the Boston Licensing Board. And today I'm also joined by Commissioner Liam Curran and Commissioner Kiana Saxon. Thank you. Please ensure that your audio and visuals are working properly. I will call each item in the order that it appears on this morning's agenda. I will ask who is present on behalf of the licensee, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department, and whether there are any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify. I will then swear in all parties. After that, the police report will be read into the record and the licensee or their representative will have the opportunity to make a brief statement followed by questions by the chair and commissioners. All testimony will be limited only to those individuals with firsthand personal knowledge of the alleged incident. We'll begin with the first item on this morning's agenda, calling item number one, Bosworth Place, Inc., doing business as Beantown Pub, located at 100 Tremont Street. Dated the incident August 3rd, 2023, assault and battery, employee on patron in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning. Uh, my name is Dominic Gervasi. I'm a manager at the Bean Town Pub, and I'm joined by uh, Sharon Walsh, who's the manager, uh, Roger Zegkaib, who is the general manager, and Fred Theogene, who is a manager as well and uh, has firsthand uh, information. Thank you. Thank you. And who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Detective James Walsh. Thank you, Detective. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Great. Can all those who wish to testify please raise your right hand? Thank you. And Mr. Gervasi, I don't, I don't see the other individuals you mentioned. I, I'm here. I just can't get the picture up for some so reason. I just Oh, there we go. It's not my video. There we okay. go. Thank you very much. Once again, uh, if all those uh, who plan to testify could please raise your right hand. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, Detective Walsh, if you could please read the police report into the record for us. About 1.45 a.m. on Thursday, August 3rd, 2023, Officer Mejia in the Alpha 436 responded to a radio call for an assault and battery in progress at the Beantown Pub, 100 Tremont Street, Boston. Officer Roca was also on scene. On arrival, Officer Mejia met with the victim, Sophia Pereira, and witness Somto Sheryl Onubogu outside of the pub. Pereira stated she and Onubogu were inside the pub when they asked to use the restroom, Pereira stated a bartender told her she could, but the manager, Fred Theogene, told her she couldn't. Pereira stated after going back and forth with Theogene about the restroom, he finally allowed her to use it. Pereira stated she then got up and walked past Theogene towards the restroom <clears throat> when her arm brushed against his stomach. Pereira stated she then heard someone yell, quote, hey, but didn't think it was to her. Pereira stated Theogene then grabbed her right arm 
spun her around, put his hand on the small of her back and pushed her toward the pub exit. Herrera stated she was not drunk and believes her sadness for a personal issue she's dealing with was mistaken for intoxication. Herrera stated her arm was hurting but declined EMS. Officer Roca spoke with Theogene, who stated Pereira appeared to be drunk at the bar and kept saying, quote, I'm ill. Theogene stated Pereira was given water, and when, when she asked to use the restroom, he told her to use the restroom at the hotel next door since the pub was closing. Theogene stated as Pereira was walking past him, she bumped into him and elbowed him. Theogene then stated he then decided she would not be allowed to use the restroom and directed her outside. Theogene stated as Pereira was walking outside, she was repeatedly saying, quote, I'm scared, even though he never touched her. Patrol Supervisor Sergeant Whiteman was notified of the incident. <clears throat> On August 5th, 2023, Detectives McDonald and Walsh conducted a Code 35 license premise violation at Beantown Pub 100 Tremont Street. Detectives spoke with the manager, Fred Theogene, who stated he was just trying to let someone use the bathroom and she elbowed him twice. So he escorted her off the premise. Detective McDonald issued a citation for employee on patron assault and battery number 8794. Mr. G Mr. Theogene was very cooperative throughout the process. And uh, that is all at this time. Thank you, Detective Walsh. Uh, Mr. Gervasi, would you or the other representatives of the license premise like to address the alleged incident? I wonder if, uh, if you actually turn off your video, if we might be able to hear you better. Certainly. Let me try again. Can you hear me now? We can. No? Yes, we can hear you. You can hear me. Okay. So, um, so the, perfect. All right. So the, this whole incident was caught on video. And so um, what I'm about to uh, relay can all be documented by the video. We have a couple of different angles. It's kind of cumbersome to um, to watch. So, um, but we can provide them if necessary. Um, shortly before our last call, uh, both Ms. Onubagu and Ms. Pereira came in to the bar. The, um, it was about 1.18 a.m. Um, the were given water. They, they did not have anything, any alcohol whatsoever. As a matter of fact, uh, Ms. Pereira had nothing to drink at all. Only, I'm sorry, Ms. Onubogu had nothing to drink at all. Ms. Pereira had a water. Um, Ms. Onubogu retrieved something small from her bag, went to the bathroom, and Ms. Uh, Pereira was um, remained at the table. As soon as her friend left the table, um, Ms. Pereira went face down on the table for about three minutes. And, um, you know, she popped her head up, but was like looking around, but was face down on the table for about three minutes. When her friend returned, um, the dining area had cleared out because everyone was leaving. It was a, a late Wednesday night. And um, Mr. Theogene uh, approached them and said, listen, that, you know, last call's done. They hadn't ordered anything or drank anything and that they had to leave. Miss um, Pereira, the, the alleged victim, couldn't even communicate. She was standing back and her friend was communicating to uh, Mr. Theogene. Mr. Theogene finally relented and said, okay, you can use the restroom. And, um, and he allowed her to use the restroom, but rather than walk around him, she brushed by him and gave him like a quick little brush with the, with the elbow. And then Mr. Theogene said, you know, this isn't worth it. This is a busy time of night. It's closing time. I'm getting people out. I can't have somebody who was just face down, face down walking around the premises. So he went, he walked down the aisle about two or three feet behind her and was yelling, hey, hey, hey so loud that everyone at the bar turned and looked. You can see it on the cameras. Everyone looked. It was obviously a loud enough thing. Ms. Pereira um, ignored him, continued to walk. Mr. Theogene tapped her like with his index finger on the shoulder and then got in front of her and say, listen, you can't use the bathroom. You have to leave. Um, use the bathroom at the, at the hotel. And then Ms. Pereira walked about five or six feet and then sat down on a stool and, ref and refused to move. And so Mr. Theogene stood there beside her you know, uh, telling her that she had to leave. She finally got up. Mr. Theogene did not touch her, was not touching her um, as he escorted her out. She left on her own. And then um, I think her friend may have called the police. Um, 
like the following day or the following week or something like that, we, we, we took the film just in case and there was nothing there. There was no, there was no incident. There was merely an interaction. And, um, and that was it until we heard about this hearing and, and that's uh, where we are today. And Mr. Theogene's here. I mean, you can ask him questions certainly, but, but we do have this video that will document everything that I just said. <clears throat> Thank you. Are there any other members of the team, Mr. Theogene, Ms. Walsh, um, that you would like to add uh, before we move to questions from the board? No, that's perfect. I'd like, um, um, Mr. Tavazi said, we do have the video. It's just in like four different parts with her moving around the bar. So, um, but we do have it. Thank you. With that, we will move to see if there are any questions from the board, uh, beginning with Chairwoman Joyce. Thank you. I have no questions at this time. Mr. Curran? Uh, just that I would like to review the video. So if you could submit it. Commissioner Saxon? No questions for me. Thank you. Thank you. If you could please uh, provide that video, you can either send it via email to licensingboard at boston.gov, uh, or you can drop it off in hard copy on a flash drive to our office, uh, which is room 809 in City Hall. With that, okay. the, board, the board will take this matter under advisement. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item Thank number you. two. Dorchester Tavern LLC doing business as Dot Tavern located at 840 Dorchester Ave in Dorchester. Date of the incident to June 10th, 2023. Assault and battery in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning. Thank you, Attorney Dream, Madam Chair, members of the board, Carolyn Conway, 350 West Broadway, on behalf of the licensee. I have with me today the owner and manager, Mr. Doug George, and also Megan Driscoll, who was uh, an employee and the person in charge on that evening. Thank you very much. Yes, and I see both Mr. George and Ms. Driscoll. Thank you. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Don't appear that the officer is present, or Sergeant Crabb, so Lieutenant Detective Troy. Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Megan, that would be you. Yes, thank you. Yep. And Mr. George as well. Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Okay. Thank you. Lieutenant Detective Troy, if you could please read the police report into the record for us. Uh, reading by, from a police report written by uh, Officer Zachary Kalpinski, it reads as follows. On 1202, uh, about 1202, on Saturday, June 10th, 2023, Officer Kalpinski and Lopez responded to a radio call for an assault and battery at 840 Dorchester Avenue, Dorchester. On arrival, officers were met by the victim, uh, Miss uh, Victoria Beaudry, along with her sister and multiple friends outside the Dot Tavern. Officers observed that Miss Beaudry had a laceration beneath her left eye, as well as notable swelling. Miss Beaudry declined EMS. When officers asked what happened to, to Miss Beaudry and her friends, stated that there was a fight inside the bar amongst patrons and members of the bar staff. Miss Beaudry stated that she was uh, at the bar with her boyfriend and friends when an altercation broke out between her boyfriend and another patron of the bar. Ms. Beaudry then got involved by trying to, uh, in trying to break up the fight. At this point, point the fight had uh, turned into a brawl and staff made efforts to get all involved in the fight out of the bar. At this point, the suspect, Megan Driscoll, and the victim got involved in an altercation with one another. Staff were able to get Ms. Beaudry and her friends to exit the establishment and wait uh, for the arrival of police. Officer spoke with a witness, Ms. Uh, Carl Zuck. Carlosa, uh, and were informed by Miss Carlosa that the fight occurred inside or near the door of the tavern, and that it started with two patrons fighting and Miss Beaudry attempting to break it up, uh, and then a brawl ensued. Miss Carlosa stated that after the fight calmed down, Miss Beaudry and the rest of her party had left the tavern and gone outside. Officers also spoke to another witness, Miss um, Ganji, who uh, lives across the street from the tavern. Ms. Ganji stated that she heard a commotion outside and came to make sure that everything was okay. The Dodd Tavern was issued a license premise violation by Sergeant Crabb, who also responded and assisted. Officers requested Boston EMS to uh, evaluate Ms. Beaudry 
and no, ambul no ambulances were available at this time. She was transported by Officer Lopez to uh, her address at her request. That's the extent of the um, police report. Thank you, Lieutenant Detective Troy. Attorney Conway, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes, uh, but if I may first, Lieutenant Detective Troy, does the um, violation indicate that the licensee was cooperative in this case? Um, yes, it does. Okay. Um, Ms. Driscoll, would you state your first name and last name for the record, please? Uh, Megan Driscoll. And you're employed by the Dot Tavern? Yes. And on the incident of the night in question, you were the person in charge? Yes. Can you describe for the board the security that was on that night at the front door and throughout the premises? Uh, we have a doorman and then floating security staff. And then I also oversee the whole operation. And is it generally a fair statement to say that you know the, most of the customers that come into the tavern? Yeah, most of the customers, almost all of them, are from the area or Savin Hill. Okay. And did you know these particular people that on that evening? No. Can you describe to the board what happened with respect to this altercation? Um, there was a few people in an altercation by the front door. I went over to sort of break it up, got who we needed to get out, out. And then um, I saw that they already had called the cops, so I didn't bother calling the police because I didn't want to hit them with the double. Okay, but were you involved in the altercation at all? Um, no. You were just assisting? I was just trying to assist stopping it and getting them outside of the door. Okay, and have you seen these people since that night of the altercation? No. And can you tell us what, if any, uh, measures you've taken since June of last year with respect to the security and the operation of the premises? Um, all the bartenders have been made aware that if something like this does happen again, that they're to call the police immediately. Um, we have cameras that have been installed and I also have an extra doorman on every night and the staff has been trained in scenarios like this as well. Okay, and we've had no incidents since last and, year. Yeah, no incidents since. I have nothing further for the board. Thank you. We'll see if there are any questions from the board. Uh, Chairman Joyce, any questions? Thank you. Um, I don't have any questions at this time. Commissioner Curran, any questions? No, thank you. Commissioner Saxon? None from me. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement as well. Thank you very much. Calling item number three, Croke Park, Inc., doing business as Croke Park, located at 268 West Broadway in South Boston. Date of the incident, July 30th, 2023. Assault and battery employee on patron in violation of Mass General Law, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Daniel Kelly. Thank you, Mr. Kelly, who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department. Officer Michael Kelly. Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? No. I, um, John, I see uh, Sergeant uh, Crabb here. I, I think he's, um, he's on mute. Am I on mute? Oh, maybe see you Sorry, sorry, board. Um, yeah, Sergeant David Crabb with Boston Police. Thank you very much. Uh, can you all please raise your right hand? Thank you. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Uh, who will be reading the police report into the record? I, I have a copy of the report here. I can read the report. Thank you, Officer Kelly. You may please proceed. About 12.51 on Sunday, 7.30, 2023, officers Kelly and Joyce in the Fox 102 Alpha responded to a radio call for a fight at 268 West Broadway, Croke Park. Prior to arrival, officers were notified by Channel 6 dispatch that there was a Hispanic male wearing a red shirt in his 30s trying to fight everyone. Upon arrival, officers observed a male matching the suspect's description leaning on the hood of the car outside of 268 West Broadway. Officers spoke to the male the suspect, Christian Gonzalez Sanchez, who stated he was punched in the face and he was really mad. The suspect initially requested EMS. Officers observed blood on the suspect's chin. The suspect smelled like alcohol and appeared to be extremely intoxicated. 
If they're initially requesting EMS, the suspect declined EMS and asked officers for a ride home. Officers spoke to the bar manager, Daniel Kelly, who stated the suspect had been asked to leave the bar for trying to start a fight. Kelly said the suspect initially left, but returned and tried to push his way through the door. Kelly stated the suspect began flailing around, screaming, and trying to fight other patrons and people on the street. Fox 912 Sergeant Crabb arrived on scene and issued Crow Park a license permits violation, citation number 070539. Officers gave the suspect a ride home to his mother's house at 193 West 9th Street, South Boston. Body one cameras are activated. Thank you, Officer Kelly. Uh, Mr. Kelly, would you like to address the alleged incident? Absolutely. Good morning, members of the board. Uh, I'll tell you the best I can what happened. So we had a young man. It was quiet. And he, he oh, Mr. Kelly, we, we've kind of lost the ability to hear you just now. Um, you were okay when you started. I don't know if you can move closer to your microphone. Okay, sorry about that. That's better. So what happened was, for some reason, the young man seemed to flip out at nobody in particular. And it sounded like he was kind of more arguing with himself than anybody else. He didn't have anybody that he had an issue with. So I know him, uh, get on fairly good with him. And I said, you've got to go home. This no, whatever, you know what I mean? You, which he did. He went out and he got into his car and he got back out of his car and he ran towards two people who were outside smoking and uh, screaming and roaring at them that made no sense. I told them to come in. So I then called the police immediately because like I've said before, it's the one question I hate being asked by the board. Why didn't you call the police? I promised I would never make that mistake again. I called the police immediately and give a description. Uh, Mr. Kelly, we, we've lost you again. Sorry about that. Thank you. I'm in a sentence, but I may have to see that. No, we, we can't hear you again. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. All right. So he got into his car, and I was saying that was fine, but he jumped out of his car, and he tried to force his way back into the bar again. And uh, I stopped him by putting my arm in his face. So he did that three more times, the same routine, got into his car, got back out of his car, tried to charge his way in while the police were coming. So when the police came, uh, it went down the exact way the police officer said it did. And they gave him a ride home. And the odd thing about it was that he was shown bizarre behavior. But at the same time, he was smart enough not to mention that he had this car there. They brought him home. A few minutes later, he came back for his car and drove away. And uh, that's the last time I saw him. And the other thing I want to correct is it suggests that I'm between uh, 50 and 60. I appreciate that, Officer Kelly, but I'm 67. <laughs> and uh, that's about it. I have no bad feeling towards him. And I don't believe he has any bad feeling towards me. What happened was when the police officer said, what happened to your face? He pointed at me. You know, he said he, which I was the only one that he had physical contact with and I wasn't going to let him back in to harass the people so at the risk of sounding conceited I actually think I did everything as good as I could have done under the circumstances this time at least I feel thank you Mr. Kelly we will see if there are any questions from the board at this time uh, Chairman Madrice any questions thank you Mr. Kelly yes you did the right thing by calling the police we appreciate that just a question for you um how long was he here? Absolutely, yeah. How long? Uh, not too long. And he actually is not much of a drinker. Either. That's the other thing, but I, I'm not sure. I, I, I think that, that he either had some kind of a mental breakdown or that he might have taken something other than alcohol, but I don't know that any of that for sure. But that would be a possibility to think about. Okay, thank you. I don't have any other questions. Thank you so much. Commissioner Curran, any questions? Uh, not for me, thank you. Commissioner Saxon? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement as well. Thank you for your service, officers. Thank you. Calling item number four, Earl's Restaurant, Boston, Mass, Inc., doing business as Earl's Kitchen and Bar, located at 800 Boylston Street. Date of the incident, October 4th, 2023. Assault and battery, employee on employee, in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Chapter 265, Section 13A. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Good morning, Attorney Trish Farnsworth uh, with Lawson and Whiteson. Uh, good morning, Attorney Green, Kathleen Joyce, and uh, commissioners. Uh, and with me is Lynn McDonald, the uh, Regional Director of Operations for Earl's Restaurant. Thank you very much. Uh, good morning. I do see Ms. McDonald on the screen. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Uh, Detective Fencer. 
Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? Thank you. Can you both please raise your right hand? Do you, uh, Detective Spencer, you're right. Sorry. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Yes, I do. Thank you. Detective Fencer, if you could please read the police report to the record for us. Yes. On October 4th, 2023, Officer O'Donnell and the Delta Delta 96F, while assigned to the front desk at D4, took a walk-in A and B report from Mr. Brian Vallejas with the assistance of Officer Bagan translating. The victim who was employed at Earl's Kitchen in the Prudential Center located at 800 Boylston Street was the victim of an assault by a co-worker. The victim stated that a person known to him as Wilmer Miranda, a 45 to 50 year old Hispanic male, started taunting him and then pushed him. The victim pushed the suspect back and he was punched in the forehead and mouth. The victim then punched the suspect in the left shoulder before being separated by other co-workers. The suspect accused the victim of being under the influence of drugs and alcohol and threatened to have him deported. The victim went home after the incident. The suspect could not be found after a check of Mach 43 and sieges. At about 7.25 p.m. on 10-5-2023, Detective Fencer and the Delta 801, along with Detective Gorman and the Delta 843, responded to Earl's Kitchen and Bar located at 800 Boylston Street and issued license premise inspection notice 026498 for an assault and battery employee on employee. That is the end of this report. Thank you, Detective Fencer. Attorney Farnsworth, would you like to address the alleged incident? Yes. Um, a, a few questions for Detective Fencer, please. Um, Detective, when you delivered the, um, the notice of violation the following day, was management cooperative? They were. Okay, and then I understand you didn't take the interview um, that Officer O'Donnell did, but um, it's true that there was no apparent injury um, listed in the in the violation incident report. No, there was not. And there's no complaint or by um, Mr. Vallejos that he was you know suffered physical injury. Correct. That's correct. Okay, great. Um, then I just have a few questions for um, Lynn McDonald, if I may. You may. Um, Lynn, can you just state your name for the record, please? Yeah, good morning. My name is Lynn McDonald. And your title, uh, position? And Regional Director of Operations for the Atlantic Region. Okay. Um, can you just describe um, who Brian Vallejos is and William Miranda are, what their roles are um, at, at Earl's Restaurant? Yes, so both Brian and it's pronounced Wimel, um, both, well, one of them previously worked for us. Uh, they work on our prep team. So they work with a team that ranges from six to 12 in the morning. Um, and they work anytime from 6 p.m. till about 3 p.m., depending on the day. Okay, so they are located in the, in the kitchen area, in the line. Correct, yes. And this incident um, happened on Saturday, September 30th at 10.30 a.m., is that correct? Yes. Okay, the the um, police report was taken on October 4th, which is the following Wednesday. Um, but can you just describe what, um, well, was there an altercation in the, um, in the kitchen area between these two? Yes, there was. So what had happened was Brian who is the victim, had put his white towel on Wimel's station, which is where he preps his food. Um, and Wimel was unhappy about it and then said a few words to him. And then Wimel put his hands on him and then punched him. So following that, our sous chef, which is our management team, stepped in to break up the fight and immediately re, re removed both the employees from the building. At that time, our head chef that was working checked in with the entire team to make sure everyone was okay and no one was in danger. And then following that, myself and my regional chef of operations was notified. Um, and then we started an investigation. So at Earl's, we have something called a respectful workplace policy. Um, and one of the broken policies uh, is violence. Um, so from violence, because there was physical contact of an aggressive nature, we filed an investigation. So what that entailed was Bram and our head chef interviewed the witnesses that were there that day so that we could get a full picture of what had happened um, to ensure the stories aligned. So 
we had asked both the employees not to come back in the building until the investigation was wrapped up so that we could take our findings and then move forward with the best decision um, for our employees to make sure they have a safe space to work in. So following that, what came out of this was Wimel was terminated from Earl's and Brian still works with us today at our location in the Prudential Center. But um, Brian um, received some discipline because he also you know, participated in the altercation. Correct. So Brian wasn't allowed back in the building. Um, and there was a span of 10 days that he was suspended from work. And then we brought him back onto the team and reset expectations with him. Okay. So that's, that's all the questions I have. Um, if you have questions for us. Thank you, Attorney Farnsworth. We will see if there are any questions. Uh, Chairman Joyce. <clears throat> Thank you. I have no questions. Okay. Commissioner Curran. Um, maybe more in the way of future uh, reaction to something like this. Would you, in the future, uh, just notify the police that something had happened? Yeah, so we had a meeting with our management team, letting them know after, like if anything were to happen with a patron or a guest and an employee, we would right away. So this is the first time we've ever seen this. So we did follow up with a, a meeting directly following, which actually happened on the Sunday with the entire management team in the kitchen, but also the front of house. Okay, I would just advise for the future, this might be a you know a time where you can call the police just, just to cover yourselves with us. So that's yeah, all. absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Saxon. Any questions? No questions. Thank you. Thank you. With that, the board will take this matter under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. Calling item number five, Korean Fusion Inc. doing business as Koi, located at 16 to 18 North Street. Date of the incident, October 28th, 2023. Overcrowding, 129. Mechanical count, capacity 52. In violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.03J and 1.06A and F. Who is present on behalf of the licensed premise? Joanne Dow, General Manager, Current Center. Thank you. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? Dodge Detective William Gallagher. Detective Eddie Hernandez, if needed. Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge of the alleged incident who wish to testify this morning? No. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. I do. Thank you, Sergeant Detective Gallagher. If you could please proceed with the police report. Yes. Good morning. On 10 28, 2023, at 9 45 p.m. Sergeant Detective William Gallagher, Detective Eddie Hernandez, along with Boston Fire Department, nightclub inspectors, firefighters, Peter Ryan and Ryan Cox, conducted a licensed premise inspection of Coy at 16 North Street. As detectives entered the premise, they observed a line waiting to enter. Detectives inquired with the doorman as head of the line as to the count and the capacity of the premise. Doorman replied to detectives that he had a capacity of 95 and his count was 98. Detectives informed the doorman to hold emissions while they conducted their own count. Detective Hernandez conducted a mechanical count, which resulted in 129 persons being counted. Sergeant Detective Gallagher relayed those numbers to the person charged, Ms. Katarina Chang. Boston Fire Department inspectors informed Ms. Cheng that she needed to clear the establishment of patrons and conduct a new count of the staff and those patrons who were dining allowed to remain inside. At that time, she could reopen COI to the posted capacity of 52. As a result, what was discovered, Sergeant Gallagher issued a license premise inspection notice number 059281 to COI for overcrowding. 129 found a mechanical count, house count of 98, Capacity of 52. Ms. Cataract Chang signed for and accepted the notice. Detectives remained on scene till after the premise was cleared by staff and allowed to reopen based on the facts. Thank you, Ms. Dow. Would you like to address the alleged incident? Um, during 1028, it was a Halloween weekend, and unfortunately, there was a bunch of pub crawls that were currently in place um from my knowledge unfortunately it was a situation where 
the counter may have been broken. We were abiding by a 115 um, capacity. That was a clerical issue that I believe the manager on duty, Katharina Chang, had spoken to the um, ABCC and the fire marshals about. We understand that it is a violation on our part and have worked very hard towards the our recent pub crawls over the St. Patty's Day weekends to abide by the 52 capacity strictly. Thank you. Anything further before we move to questions from the board? Okay. Uh, with that, Chairman Joyce, any questions? I do have some questions. I'm just confused. Um, you, what was the ABCC um, thing you were talking about? So um, for years now, we have been, it was a clerical issue on the licenses with ISD, where we have a standing capacity and approved for a standing capacity of 115. We understand that regardless, we are in violation on that night of a 129 mechanical count. And our legal team is currently um, fighting ISD on mediating and fixing this standing capacity issue. Okay, uh, so it's also come to my attention, uh, you don't have, we don't have a copy of your ISD in your um, place of assembly. So we need that, you need to work on that immediately or your license premise could be closed down. Your license was issued without us receiving a copy of the ISD in the place of assembly. Um, and where where is this one fifteen number coming from? This was a clerical issue from years um, past. We were just approved from it. I believe that we've um, we tried to fix this. It's just a long winded process, I believe. Can you can you uh, follow up with us? You know. It, it doesn't make any sense to us with our documents and our records about the 115. We don't have 115 on anything. Um, I understand that. It's, it's um, all of our licenses upon review say 52. Right. So if we, um, <clears throat> until we have that straightened out, you should abide by 52. Um, but this should be the most important thing you're working on right now, because right now you're, nothing's up to date and we will um, revisit this and possibly we might have to shut you down until you get it straightened out. We will shut you down until you get it straightened out, so. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Commissioner Kern, any questions? It's just unclear. Um, do you have an assembly permit from Boston Fire Department? Yes. And the number on that is 52 as well? 52 as well. Okay, yep, thank you. Commissioner Saxon, any questions? No questions, thank you. Thank you, we will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. Calling item number six, Alston Silhouette Lounge, LLC, doing business as Silhouette Lounge, located at 200 Brighton Ave in Alston. Date of the incident is January 18th, 2024. Expired CV, entertainment and billiards licenses in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64. No posted ISD or BFD permits in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 64, and Boards Rule 1.02b. And persons under 21 in possession of alcohol in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 34a, 34c, and 6464a. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning. Michael Ford here representing the licensee. And with me is the uh, GM, Sarah Lieb. Great. Thank you very much. Who is present on behalf of the Boston Police Department? I am Detective Hernandez. Thank you. Are there any other individuals with firsthand knowledge mm -hmm. of the incident who wish to testify this morning? Sergeant Detective Gallagher, if need be. Thank you. Can you all please raise your right hand? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. I do. Thank you. Detective Hernandez, if you could please read the police report to the record for us. Good morning. I'm reading from police report, which I wrote on Thursday, January 18, 2024. Chair Detective William Gallagher and Detective Eddie Hernandez were signed to the BP license permit unit to conduct a license permit inspection of Silhouette Lounge. Upon reviewing the licenses, certificates, and permits of the establishment, Detective observed there was no inspection or service certificate posted. 
no current common wish license posted, uh, no current city of Boston entertainment license posted, no current billiards license posted, and no Boston Fire Police Department place of assembly permit posted. As detectives walked into the establishment, detectives observed five patrons drinking alcoholic beverages. Detectives noticed these patrons looked young and asked them to produce identification to confirm their ages. Patrons stated they were under 21 years of age, provided detectives with their driver's licenses. They also provided the fraudulent driver's licenses they had used to obtain the beverages. The following patrons were positively identified. Ms. Sonia Preslev did have in her possession a valid California driver's license belonging to Olivia Roth, her true valid New York driver's license, her displayed her correct date of birth of 7 2004 Ms. Lucia Lavelle did have in her possession a fraudulent Pennsylvania driver's license in the name of Mar Mac Margaret McDonough, her true valid Vermont driver's license displayed her correct date of birth of 6 2004 Mr. Brian Black produced a Maryland driver's license stating his date of birth was 11 21 2004. Detectives were able to confirm the driver's license was fraudulent. The fraudulent driver's license was confiscated by detectives. Mr. Black then produced his, val his true valid mass driver's license, which confirmed his actual date of birth of 11 21 2003. Ms. Nicole Eisenstadt produced a uh, Maryland driver's license stating her date of birth was 10 14 2001. Um, she then provided a true valid New York driver's license that confirmed her actual date of birth was 10 14, 2003. Ms. Gwen Tormey produced a South Carolina driver's license with date of birth of 2 1, 2001. Her true South Carolina driver's license confirmed her actual date of birth of 2 1, 2004. All five individuals were summoned to the court for persons under 21 pills of alcohol, false misuse of an RB document. Ms. Roth provided uh, her driver's license to Ms. Preslev. Um, she will be summoned to court for assisting person uh, under 21 to purchase alcohol. Detectives brought these matters to the attention of the person in charge, Ms. Sarah Lee. As a result of what uh, detectives observed, signed Detective Gallagher issued license for inspection notice 018083 for no ISD certificate posted, no current um, entertainment license posted, no current billiards license posted, no BFD place or assembly permit posted, no current common ritual license posted, and persons that had 21 plus of alcohol on premise. Ms. Leap signed for an accepted the notice. That's all. Thank you. Attorney Ford, would you like to address the alleged incident? Uh, just one uh, question. Detective Hernandez, was the licensee cooperative? Very so. Very cooperative. All right. Thank you so much. I have no, no further uh, questions. Before I call Ms. Uh, Lee, just with respect to the licenses and the certs, um, they're all posted now. They're up. Uh, there was an error. The, the Silhouette is uh, has its supervising group. This is multiple uh, bars and restaurants. Uh, so they were there. They should have been up. It was a it was a mistake. I don't know if the board wants photocopies of those or what's the board's pleasure on that. Just make sure that they're posted. Okay, we will. We we, we will. All right. As with respect to everything else, I just have a very brief um, direct of Ms. Lieb. Ms. Lieb, are you here? Yes, I am. All right. Would you introduce yourself to the board? Hi, I'm Sarah Lieb. I'm the general manager of the Silhouette Lounge in Austin. And I just draw your attention to January 18th of this year. Were you working? Yes, I was. And there was a police officer inspection, correct? And they determined, they saw that there was uh, fake IDs, one reel that didn't match up. Is that fair to say? That's right. All right. And when you, when you looked at them, um, did you believe, did, did you have reason to believe that your doorman would have, would have thought that they were authentic? Yeah, they were, they were pretty, um, they were good looking. They didn't have the hologram on them. Um, they matched all the other things. They were out of state, however. Were valid, but I did ask um, the, the detectives there if I could take a look at them um, after they confiscated them just to see what we were working with. And they were pretty good, big ideas. But notwithstanding, you, you worked with the police uh, while they were at the table. Of course, of course. And, you know, as a result of that, this was a mistake, right? One, one kind of. Uh, absolutely. On. Absolutely. It was a mistake. The doorman who let them in. Um, has been, he was given a, a 
few days off, a couple weeks off. Um, he's been retrained personally, and the staff has been retrained. And you know, the the no out of state IDs, that type of thing, have been posted. So, and I I don't know if maybe you had said it when the cutout. Um, will the uh, will the establishment be acquiring uh, scanners? Yes, yes, we will. We are researching them right now. We've had some problems with our internet and Wi-Fi connectivity, um, but I did uh, request Detective Hernandez's. Oh, sorry about that. Um, business card when he before he left, so that I could run some emails with the potential scanning devices by him to keep them. Miss Lee, your audio keeps going in and out. I don't I'm, know if you can. I'm, I'm sorry about that. Let me see if I can turn the picture off. Does that help at all? Uh, it, it seems to. Much okay. better. Okay. Okay. All right. So you're, you're working with Detective Hernandez. Find out what's the best scanner to yeah. use. Is that fair to say? Yes. And then I just want to talk about outer state. IDs. Uh, you talked about retraining of staff and the and the doormen. Um, what will you be doing if a prospective patron uh, presents a non Massachusetts ID? That will go straight to the manager. The, if there's a valid looking, otherwise seems to check out ID from out of state, that ID has to go and get me Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Can you hear me still? No, we yes. lost you for a second there. I don't know why. Um, all right, I'll do it slowly. Let me know if you're missing anything, all right? Wait, we're, um, we're losing you again, Miss Lee. Um, I don't know how to remedy this. I can write it down and put it up in a sign. Uh, uh, I'm not sure. It seems to be getting worse. Okay. Um, let me try it again. Much better. I will be getting worse. Still? Just, continue. Just continue. Okay. Um, I don't know what what y'all missed or didn't miss there. I apologize. With um, respect to the, let's take it back to patron, come, prospective patron comes in, presents an out of state ID. I believe you testified, not trying to put words in your mouth, that that goes to the manager. And then yes. what happens next? And then the manager has to check for further backup, for example, passport or otherwise, if it's if they have to have other forms of ID, again, if it's anything questionable, anybody under 25 looking, under 30 looking, that needs to be in the house. Basically, nobody's coming in unless they have their passport, their military ID, their Massachusetts, their two forms of Massachusetts licensing. Okay, with that, I, I don't have any uh, for, uh, further questions for Ms. Uh, Leave. I just put it out. Uh, you know, learning experience uh, has you know adopted a policy that we believe will uh, work. So with that, I turn it over to the board. Thank you, Board Chairman Joyce. Any questions? I do have some comments. Um, for the IDs were <clears throat> were fraudulent, and no backup was asked for. But two, but I think two of them were um, were valid out of state were valid IDs. Um, it appears that the doorman wasn't looking at the actual person. So that's a comment. The other comment is you can't rely on scanners either. Um, no, that would be, that's more of a deterrent factor. I'm sorry. Yeah, let, the, let the, the chair. I apologize. No, just to finish my thought, the scanners as well, you can't rely on an out of state ID that scans correctly. So um, it's good that you're putting it in place, but you, the staff really needs to be uh, diligent about this. And when you're asking for backup ID, I tell people uh, it really should be a picture ID. Asking yes. for a credit card or an expired school ID doesn't work. So <clears throat> that's all I have. Thank you, Commissioner Kern. Any questions? Uh, no questions. I would just second the chair's comments. Thank you, Commissioner Saxon. No questions from me. Thank you. Thank you. The board will take this matter under advisement as well. Thank you. Thank you. That concludes the license premise inspection portion of this morning's hearing. The remaining two items are informational hearings. Uh, item number seven 
It's an informational hearing regarding 154 Maverick LLC doing business as 154 Station located at 154 Maverick Street in East Boston. This is an informational hearing regarding non-use of the license in violation of Mass General Laws, Chapter 138, Section 77, and Section 64. This hearing was called uh, after the board acknowledged correspondence on March 7th, stating that the most recent concept at the license premise had closed. Uh, any comments uh, from the chair or members of the board before we hear from the licensee? I'm just going to um, defer to Commissioner Carwin to take the lead on this one. Uh, we want to obviously know what's happening with the license at this location. <clears throat> Yeah, no opening comments, just uh, I'll wait to hear from Attorney Upton. Thank you. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, good morning, everyone. Andrew Upton, attorney for the licensee. With me is John Tyler, uh, controlling member of the LLC and manager of record, as well as corporate counsel, Scott Adams. Um, if it pleases the board, I'd like to give a brief uh, chronology on the license and let you know where we are now. And we're certainly glad to answer any questions uh, before, during, or after. Yes, thank you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, just to start out, this license was granted to 154 Maverick LLC in 2015 with significant community support. 154 Maverick LLC was the license holder from the beginning. 154 Maverick LLC also owns the building. Uh, Melissa Tyler was the original LLC manager. She was not an owner of 154 Ma Maverick LLC. She brought in a business partner that was not approved by the city of Boston around 2017. Uh, in 2018, John Tyler won a superior court decision that he is the majority owner of 154 L Maverick LLC. Uh, John Tyler then attempted to clear up the mess caused by his ex-wife with this restaurant um, and built a relationship with Mr. Lyons, who had been brought in. From 2015 to 2022, the business was very popular in East Boston under John Tyler's management. Uh, pursuant to demands from Mr. Lyons, uh, Mr. Tyler tried to negotiate a uh, business arrangement with Mr. Lyons that was compliant with state and uh, Boston licensing laws. Uh, that effort failed and Mavericks closed in March of 2022. Tyler continued not long after uh, with a concept known as the Maverick House Tavern from April 22 to September 22. Um, that uh, iteration closed uh, when he lost key staff. Uh, he then started a negotiation with a group of East Boston restaurant operators in October 2022. That operating group broke up during the pendency of negotiations, uh, reformed with one operator, Mr. Andres Yaramillo, in April of 2023, uh, which delayed the reopening of the restaurant. Uh, by October 23, uh, John and Andres opened the doors on a concept called Station 154 uh, with Yaramillo operating under a consulting agreement. In January of 2024, these doors closed uh, due to the fact that the concept failed and did not make money. Uh, negotiations have since started uh, for a new operator uh, and are in, in progress for a remodel and concept change with a projected opening in September and October with a strong and experienced operator. Uh, Mr. Tyler currently has two draft LOIs with what we consider to be strong potential operators, one of whom already operates a popular and established concept in Boston, which has been licensed by this board and the ABCC. Uh, so in summary, since 2015, he's had some good years, He's had some bumps in the road in his business relationship, but he's looking forward to putting this license to use. He's actively engaged in doing that, and he's looking forward to more good years. With that, we're glad to answer any questions or provide further information if requested. Thank you for that overview. Uh, Commissioner Curran, do you have any questions? Okay, Attorney Upton, mm -hmm. just to bring it into close focus, uh, the year 2023, uh, how often was the restaurant open versus closed? 2023, I would say, uh, pending confirmation from Mr. Tyler, I would say it was open and operating from 20, from October 
through just through the end of the year. So prior to October, the whole year prior to October, it wasn't open. Right. Those were uh, negotiations with the business partners and remodeling. Okay. And and when did it close in 2024? January. January. And when is the earliest it could reopen? I, I would pending confirmation from Mr. T uh, Mr. Tyler. Uh, he's talking about the end of the summer, depending on the scope of uh, any remodeling for a new operator. All right. Um, and just, you know, to, my question to you would be, is there um, is there any legal impediment to the board scheduling a, a cancellation here? Do you have any legal argument that we couldn't cancel this license? Uh, I think precedent would show that the board typically gives some leeway to operators to hold licenses, for landlords to hold licenses, and for people to get new tenants. And with a documented show of good faith on negotiations with new parties, I think that would be appropriate. Uh, you know, as you know, under the Impresas Wanicas and following cases, once you notice revocation, you yeah. still have to give the licensee six months. But the board has wide discretion and we're certainly, work, you know, we recognize yeah, so, that and we're, we're, we're willing to work with you. Yeah, that, that's my question, that, that if we, from, we move from informational to cancellation, you know, there's still a, a fair amount of time. And I think that we've expressed our frustration with the situation at this location. And there's been, a, a, you know, a lot of time that this uh, location, this license has really not been in use since it's been granted. Um, I know, you know, there was a uh, dispute and a divorce and there's been efforts, but I am really concerned with how little this license has been used. Um, these licenses were issued to be operated in the neighborhoods uh, by neighborhood operators. Um, so, you know, I think that obviously on Thursday, we'll have to have a discussion, but uh, I was just looking for your argument about, you know, legally, uh, if you had any legal objection to why we couldn't, couldn't move forward on Thursday. So um, I just wanted to give you a chance to make your argument. I, I appreciate that. If, if you're, if you're, asking me if there's a legal argument against suspension, modification, or revocation, uh, I would say it's within the board's discretion. Um, however, as I've detailed the licensee's good faith efforts uh, on numerous fronts in the face of uh, monstrous legal bills and legal challenges from within, uh, you know, he has, in the last 10 years, he's used that license extensively and effectively and is committed to doing so in the future. Um, if you were to notice a hearing two weeks or a month from now and then uh, exercise the six month potential for revocation, that would take us well past his potential new opening date anyway. So uh, I think the licensee is on you know, fairly safe ground in terms of being able to reopen and you know, recommit to using this license. Uh, but we certainly respect the board's discretion to do what it needs to do. Although at this time, I would ask the board to consider uh, the efforts and the trouble and the expense and the general uh, mental stress that Mr. Tyler has undergone to keep this license active and to not do that. Um, I respect that. Um, I just, you know, have another comment about, I think that this board has given Mr. Tyler a great deal of leeway in, in you know, in the, in the face of all of the, the legal disputes and the divorce and some of the allegations that have been made about um, it being operated improperly un under someone else's uh, beneficial interest and all that. So um, I think that regarding this one, this license and this issue, we've really gone over this several times. So I think that's all I have right now. Um, 
Right. If, if I if I can just just respond to that, you know, any any allegations of improper operation, uh, I believe never resulted in any adverse action by the board or any any loss of any court case by Mr. Tyler. So if and when any of those occurred, uh, he was not at fault and has not been found at fault and continues to try to operate in good faith. Okay, thank you. Uh, Chairwoman Joyce, do you have anything to add? The only thing I wanna ask is, could you, if it's not a problem, share with the board, you said there's two um, letters of intent with two operators, two different operators, or are you? Uh, are you yes, I did. Ne neither one is signed. They are both in negotiation. Okay. But there are two operators, which we would be glad to share with the board if that's what you're asking. Uh, we would prefer to do that on a confidential basis, so not to, uh, you know, expose sure potential operators in a public forum. I would appreciate that, just so we could take into consideration um, who Mr. Tyler is work looking to work with. Um, what would potentially need to be done by the summer? Are we just talking about cosmetic changes, or, or would it be like a full overhaul well, it, it it depends on which operator ultimately is selected. It, and, you know, if someone has one type of concept, it could take, you know, additional renovations of the kitchen space and, uh, you know, more than just paint and paper in the, in the front area. It just depends on who ends up being the operating partner um, and how, how much their plan would take in terms of time and money. But Mr. Tyler has told me he's confident that either one should get in by September. Um, and, you know, obviously he is the licensee. He is also the landlord. He he has no interest in uh, not using this license, delaying this license, not having income from this license, not having income from a tenant, helping him operate the license. Uh, you know, the legal fees, the loss of rent, the loss of income, uh, all mitigate towards a quick and effective transition to a new restaurant there. Can you any further questions from the board at this time? With that, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you. All right, thank you all very much. And calling item number eight. Uh, this is also an informational hearing. Licensee is MYN Corp. doing business as Dublin Pub, located at 7 to 9 Stoughton Street in Dorchester. This is an informational hearing regarding the licensee's security plan as requested by the board uh, at the last voting hearing on March 7th, 2024. Who is present on behalf of the licensee? Uh, for the licensee, William Godner, representing the licensee with me is the manager, Ali Nasrai. Thank you very much for being with us. And I'll ask once again, are there any uh, opening remarks or questions from Commissioner Curran, uh, Chairman Joyce, or Commissioner Saxon before we hear from the licensee? No opening remarks for me. None for me, thank you. Thank you, Attorney Gardner, if you could please walk the board through the submitted security plan uh, and then leave an opportunity for questions from the board. Uh, I, I assume everybody has a copy of the plan. We try to um, boil it down. Uh, with with the concept in mind that we have to distribute this to all of our employees and security personnel. So we want to make it as, as focused and as uh, intelligible for them as we could possibly do. If nothing else, this incident has uh, uh, caused us to refocus uh, on, on what our security procedures are and how they should be implemented. And more importantly, how they should be communicated to the employees and the security folks. Uh, in addition, what's not in the plan is, and, and I think the details of the plan are pretty self-explanatory. I won't walk through each point unless there's questions on them. But in addition to that, we've taken additional measures on, uh, from a security perspective to um, uh, make sure that the incident that was involved here doesn't happen again. We've increased the, uh, the number of uh, video cameras. Uh, uh, as you recall, the video was not operating uh, on the night of this particular incident. Uh, unfortunately, we think um, uh, that didn't help us, obviously. Uh, it, it, if we were right uh, as to what happened or what we knew happened, the video could have helped us. It's a problem. 
we've addressed it. We've increased the cameras. There's 12 cameras spread out to see if they could cover uh, more area of the licensed premises uh, than uh, what the uh, existing video system did. We've also um, ordered uh, some equipment, electric, uh, electronic wanding equipment, which is now going to be utilized by the security folks. And uh, most importantly, um, the, the management uh, of the licensee has, has spoken with uh, the uh, area uh, B2 uh, police officers. We've requested a, 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 a detail seven nights a week from 9.30 to 1.30, uh, at least one officer if that's possible. Uh, there have been no promises from uh, the B2 area at this point in time. They, they will accommodate us as best they can, depend on, on what they have for manpower and personnel. What has happened, the discussion with, uh, with, with the police uh, has, has caused, uh, at least on the weekends, a cruiser to show up um, and park outside of the exit way around closing time, which has helped move people out of there at the end of the night uh, with that type of stuff. Uh, we've One of the things in the security problem we have done, we have a minimum of six people uh, security-wise on premises. Uh, before, I think it was uh, the minimum was usually four. We're going to go with a minimum of six. And the security company that we've hired, uh, it, it's, a, it's a new one. Uh, they've committed that on if, if it appears that we're getting busy on a particular night, they can bring in more people. So six is the minimum, but uh, we we get the message that we uh, got to do a better job to cover uh, the, the entire licensed premises area so that we can anticipate problems and um, and keep the Boston police uh, as informed and as well as humanly possible. Thank you. We appreciate uh, the board's action in this regard. Thank you, Attorney Gardner. We'll move to questions from the board, uh, starting with Commissioner Curran. Thank you, Attorney Gardner. Um, is, I noticed there's nothing about how long video is going to be maintained after an incident. And the only reason I didn't put in there, Commissioner Curran, is because I didn't know at the time. Um, how long did video how, how long do you keep it um i think it's seven days like seven days after the seven days but after I, the incident yeah if the, i think we should today, it's, it's, my recommendation to my client would be to expand that to at least 60 days yeah i, I would i would want to see longer than seven days certainly 60 days would be great and we, if we if we could put that in the in the plan so we can put it in into the file i would like to see that um, I see nothing about training of security and, and just staff in general. I'd like to see a training, something about training, about that every staff person in security is uh, informed and trained about these uh, rules. Is that something we could do? Yeah, we could, def we could definitely do that. Uh, I think the plan was to make sure that uh, the board was comfortable with what we had proposed, and then we were going to circulate it to everybody. Uh, who's involved in the security and go over it with and train them on, on what we've put in the plan. Yeah, but so I, we'll put that in the plan itself. Yeah, I'd like to see something about how it's the training is going to be, um, how periodically people will be trained, new employees, um, you know, large training sessions versus uh, periodic kind of refreshers, maybe weekly, daily. I don't know. However, you guys want to handle that. I've heard places talk about. You know, daily meetings before they open for the night, just you know, going over stuff. Um, I'd like to see an integration of, um, uh, you know, conflict resolution, something like that, too. Okay. De-escalation practices, things of that nature. From a training perspective. For yeah, for security training, we I, we we usually ask about de-escalation conflict, you know, uh, training. I just do know that the, the third party security company that we've hired, they they told us and certified to us that they uh, have all of their people have received such training. And that okay, they, uh, I'd like you to, you know, if you're using a third party, you know, it's a non-delegable duty. Right. Uh, so you're you're still responsible for being on top of all of all those things, you know. So whether you get um, documentation assurances from your third party, uh, I'd like to. Make sure that those are communicated so you guys can be on top of that for for us because you know yep. we we have no direct connection to the third parties that you know because they're third party so ultimately it, it's good it's going to be us talking to you right yep. 
we operate as a hybrid too. We, we bring in the security uh, primarily to do the front door activities, but we do still have our own employees and, uh, who are dedicated security personnel so that uh, they need to be trained and informed of these. Uh, we agree with that. Okay. So I just like you to memorialize that in this plan and get, get it back to us and then we can um, acknowledge it and, and we'll put it in the file. I, I think that that's all I have right now. And then we'll circulate it to the employees and the security personnel and, and go for it with them as well. Chairwoman Joyce, did I miss anything? Uh, one request I have, I'd like to see a floor plan with where the cameras are located, marked out, and also some um, language in the plan you shouldn't wait until a Boston police request video if an incident occurs that you think may may require um, police uh, response, or if it did require police response, not just in, in preparation for hearing, you should absolutely retain the, the camera footage. As a practical matter, we do, but I will put it in the plan. Okay, because sometimes we get to these hearings and someone said, oh, the police didn't show up until eight days later and our camera only film seven, but it's clear that they should have um, retained the, the footage. So I wanna see a floor plan. And again, very important what Commissioner Curran is saying, um, a third party taking over your security is one thing, but um, there should be some elements written in here about you know, new staff being trained how often and by whom. And then as Commissioner Curran said, the shift training, the stuff should be reinforced on a daily basis. Um, so, yeah, and just while I have you, um, we need you to follow up with Wendy Law in the office regarding the manager of record. Yes. I've been trying to reach out, so unrelated to today, but now that we have you, just to remind you to do that. Yeah, we've got to switch that over. The, the, the probate uh, has just been completed. Okay, thank you. I have no other questions. Commissioner Saxon, any questions? Uh, none for right now, thank you. Thank you. With that, the board will take this under advisement as well. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for being with us. Those are all the items before the board this morning that will adjourn this morning's hearing. Uh, the board will vote Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Thank you all and enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you.